Elizabeth is going to talk to us about open sourcing your entire Puppet configuration. Thanks. OK. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm a Linux sysadmin. I really like Linux. I also really like open source. Um, but most importantly, I'm a member of the OpenStack infrastructure team. Uh, the infrastructure team manages the infrastructure that the entire OpenStack project uses. So we have a continuous integration system, code review, and then all the stuff that developers use, wikis, IRC bots, um, all the bunch of websites that we run um, that have developer statistics running on them. And we have our whole configuration online. Um, you can grab it with Git. Um, these slides are actually online um, on my website, princesslea.com already. Um, so you don't need to write it down. Um, but you can also just browse to it. Let me. Uh, so here's our configuration up on git.openstack.org. It's also mirrored to GitHub. Um, so we've got modules and manifests and everything um, all available for browsing. But the question is, why would you want to do this? Um, for an open source project like us, the answer is pretty obvious. Um, we accept contributions from everyone in our community. Um, as long as you sign the contributor license agreement and can log into our code review system, you're able to submit changes to our infrastructure. Um, it's really good for us because if you want to do something, if you want to make a change, you don't need to submit a ticket with us. You don't need to wait around to do something. You don't need to worry about what our priorities are. You can make a change and understand how our infrastructure works. And um, it's really easy to get involved. Um, but from a wider sysadmin perspective, um, maybe you're not an open source project, um, but you're thinking about open sourcing th things a bit more. Um, I find that sometimes when I look at Puppet modules, they aren't very well documented. Um, so I may see a variable in a Puppet module that I download, and I'm not sure exactly what the author wants me to put in there. Um, is it a URL with a trailing backslash or forward slash? Is it um, the name of a file, or is it the contents of the file? And then you have to go digging around in the module to find out exactly what um, you're wanting to use there. Um, so if you have all of your configuration online, um, it's pretty obvious to see what that is. So I have an example in one of these tabs. Uh, yes, so we have a Puppet module. Uh, actually, let me go to that one first here. Uh, yeah, so... All right, so these are, these are all of our modules that we use. And then we have, oops. Most of these are generic modules. So we've got you know, an XM module, uh, things for asterisk. And then uh, you go down there, we have an OpenStack project one. So we take, we use uh, parameter, parameters classes very heavily. Um, so if you go into that, you'll see we've got all of our, in our OpenStack project one, we've got all these specialized things, uh, dig it, that's files. So if you look at our puppet one, so you'll notice the git URL, um, it's pretty obvious what it's expecting there. So it, it's expecting uh, one that starts with git. So you have an example there. Um, so if you're wondering what to put there, um, since we have our whole configuration online, you're able to see that. I find it also encourages best, better, you know, better practices. Uh, it can be tempting to download a module and just edit the module to add all of your stuff to it instead of leaving it like plain and untouched and using parameterized classes. So we, by separating all of our stuff out and by making that a policy in our project, we're able to tell people and, and respond in the code reviews saying like, listen, you can't hard code a URL in this module because we want to be able to share it. Um, and we, we do a pretty good job of that. Um, certainly all of our code reviews, all of our systems administration stuff goes through code reviews. Um, all of our reviews right now, we make sure that we pay close attention to make sure we're not hard coding anything into our modules. Uh, but it's a work in pro progress. Um, and then I also think sharing is nice. I love open source. Um, so open source systems administration makes a lot of sense to me. So first, add a license. Um, I wasn't really, used to doing licenses on files, because I'm a sysadmin, I'm not a coder, I'm not a programmer. So I wasn't really used to doing this, certainly not on config files, um, but I got used to it real fast when I started working on the OpenStack project, and I, I work for HP, so they also care about licensing, it turns out. <laughs> 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 um, 
So, you told at, me to get over that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so licensing is super important. Um, I found every time I find a puppet module or any sort of configuration online, if I email the author and say, hey, what's the license on this? You know, it's a GPLv2, Apache, whatever. They'll say, oh, whatever, you know, it's a free license, do what you want. But I shouldn't have to email them. They should have a license on there. So prevent me from emailing you <laughs> and put a license on your configuration. Um, so that's very important. Um, you can do this either just by tossing a license in the repository or adding a header to each of the files. Um, in OpenStack, we try to put headers in all the files um, just because that's easier. Oh, and if anyone has questions, feel free, because I flew in from California last night and I'm very tired. <laughs> um, these are really dark. <laughs> all right. so. First, um, or the you know, step after getting a license, um, I'd say work on making sure all of your stuff is sort of split out. So the generic modules, your Apache mod module, your MySQL module that you grabbed from online already, right? Because you don't want to rewrite that. Um, make sure that's pretty vanilla. It doesn't have any standardized stuff in it. Um, and then when you write your own modules, uh, make sure that they are written in a way that can be generically used for everyone. Uh, don't hard code host names, don't hard, and even things like port numbers. Um, that's something I have to fix in puppet modules fairly regularly because we sometimes run on different ports or we're using a load balancer and then you can't use the default port. So we end up patching a fair amount of modules just so we can change the port. Um, and then, Right, so Apache, MySQL, those are pretty common ones. I wrote one recently called Review Day a few months ago, um, and that's for our code review system. Um, it's just a little module, but when I wrote it, um, there were certainly comments being like, you have to abstract this out, you can't get this host name in, so um, it's sort of just part of our process now. Um, and then next, um, I showed you the OpenStack project module, um, and that's sort of all of our um, um, servers, servers defined as uh, all, their, all their private data, or all, all the public data that we share. Um, so this can be things like our, our Git repository URL is, is public, um, file locations tend to be, we just like var, log, whatever, that's fine, we don't care if that's public. Um, so all of our customizations, port numbers are public, all kinds of things that are public. Um, and I can actually look. <coughs> So, right, so here's a bunch of files. So we have like OpenStack logos and things that are going to be um, custom to our stuff. We're not gonna include that in the modules. Um, and then we've got some, I think we include a couple of config files here when we have additional config files. And then all of our um, server definitions, we have all these manifests for each one. I showed you the, the planet one, um, but there's other ones. Uh, let's see, what does this one do? Yeah, so we're including separate modules and then we're just defining our own things like port numbers and uh, file location. So this is all just public on the internet. Um, yeah, owners, groups, we don't care, that's, that's all just public. Uh, yeah. Um, and then of course we have private data. Um, since we do everything through re revision control, um, we needed sort of a flat text file solution, and Hyra works really great for this. Um, it's just YAML, key value, um, and it's very simple to use. Well, it's relatively simple to use. <laughs> Sometimes it breaks and it's really bad. Um, <laughs> uh, and in, in, so in our, our project, um, we've got um, some different levels of, of sysadmins. So we've got these root admins who are able to edit the hybrid uh, definitions on the Puppet Master. So whenever I say, like, I need a private SSH key, all they do is give me a variable. So they'll say, okay, use this variable in Puppet, and then I use that. I don't need to worry about the passwords because the root admins are handling that. Um, and it's, it works really well for us. Um, and I can show you once we have all of those things defined. Um, we pretty much grab everything. This is a, the manifest. Yep. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, this is, this is a big file. This is all of our servers. <laughs> and pretty much all this manifest does is like link everything to Hira so we can grab everything out from it. And then um, the last step of open sourcing this whole thing is really just sharing it. Um, 
in our project, we, uh, you saw git.openstack.org. Um, we set that up using cgit, and then we also run git daemon on that server to serve out um, via that. Uh, we also mirror everything to GitHub, because apparently that's where people live, and that's where they find our code a lot. <laughs> um, and then, of course, you have to have a license on it, so I don't email you. <laughs> um, some of the additional resources. Um, we maintain documentation at ci.openstack.org, and we work very hard on making sure this is kept up to date. Um, some of the interesting things about um, working on this is since we have, we have a few people who are working on uh, infrastructure full time, um, so all day long we play with these config files. And then we have a lot of project members who just come in to fix one thing. Like we've got one guy at the Wikimedia Foundation who actually manages our wiki for us, which is pretty awesome. Um, so you've got people coming in doing just little pieces. Um, so we document our whole infrastructure. Um, and we have things like, we have a document for making a change in Puppet. So it sort of, well, that's a lot of words. <laughs> um, it shows you, it tells you how to grab our repository and then how to set up sort of a super basic um, install on a virtual machine or whatnot, um, and then how to actually um, apply using just a local file. Uh, so if people are making contributions to our project, um, they can test it locally first, you know, to some degree. And then, let's see. Yeah, and then we've got pretty much documentation for all of our things. So even if you're not really keen on looking at the, at the open source config files, we also tell you in here how to find everything. Um, where the config files live and everything. Um, so like if you look at Planet, which is the manifest I showed, uh, we pretty much document where everything lives. So if you wanted to make a change to this, um, we keep it all documented. Um, having things open source is very good for documentation, but we love having this documentation too. Um, and then that's a link to our code repository, and then uh, the Hira documentation, um, it's pretty good. Uh, and then I'm going to be giving another talk on Wednesday, um, diving into more broader issues with talking about open sourcing uh, all of your systems administration like we do. Um, and that's pretty much it.